Financial Modeling, Topic 20, NPV, IRR, and Other Investment Measures. References include Financial Modeling Beninga's 4th Edition, Chapters 1, 4, and 6. And in this topic, we're going to compute investment after tax on levered cash flows, FCFF. Compute the most common measures used to evaluate investments, including NPV and IRR. Compute the investments after tax levered cash flow, FCFE. Compute the EAC, equivalent annual cash flow, and know what measures are used in practice. So I'm thinking about starting a fishing charter in Stone Harbor, New Jersey. You can see the boat right there. It's going to cost me $159,000, and that boat is used. And we're going to try to uh, run these charters for the next eight years and see what the financial returns look like. So let's talk about the assumptions. My assumptions are I'm going to have an eight-year investment horizon. In other words, I'm going to run the business for eight years. The boat's going to be depreciated straight line over 10 years with resale for an assumed salvage value at the end of the eighth year. Note the after-tax salvage is going to be the salvage, the amount I sell the boat for in eight years, minus the tax on that resale, which would be the tax rate, times salvage minus net book, where net book is the purchase cost minus accumulated depreciation. For accountants out there, note that depreciation seems a little, is going to be a little done a little bit differently than gap. I'm going to depreciate the full cost of the boat, even though I'm going to assume a uh, residual or, re or resale or salvage value. That's because I'm going to use the IRS rules for depreciation, which says depreciate the full price and not the difference between purchase price and salvage. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm interested in cash flows, not reported income. I'm looking for actual cash flows, so I want the actual IRS tax calculation. My fixed costs include insurance and docking fees. My variable costs are included there. And I, I'm going to need networking capital immediately. In other words, to start the business today, I'm going to deposit a certain amount of money equal to my first year's revenues. And I'm going to put that in a non-interest bearing account. And so I'll consider that my networking capital. And maybe I'll have a few other things uh, in working capital also. So let's take a look at the model and see if I should do it. So I'm going to switch over to Excel. Here are some of the financial assumptions. That boat cost me $159,900. I'm going to purchase that today, time period zero. Depreciate it over 10 years using a straight line depreciation. I'm going to sell the boat in eight years for $50,000. And uh, that's going to be my full investment horizon. I'm going to shut down the business after eight years, even though the, life's, the, the life of the boat is going to be depreciated over 10. I'm going to run eight seasons. I'm going to have uh, eight week, 16 weeks per season and run seven charters a week. That means I'm gonna run 112 charters per season. 16 weeks times seven charters. I'm gonna charge $500 per charter. I'm gonna have operational expenditures of 150, so that would include, say, fuel or, uh, or a first mate. I'm gonna have insurance of $1,000 per season, a docking fee of $1,600 per season, tax rate of 25%, and networking capital, I'm gonna need that immediately and I'm going to have that uh, be equal to 10% of the, uh, that, that year's sales, the first year's sales. And I'm also going to liquidate that at the end of the eighth year. In other words, I'm going to just draw down all the money out of my account and sell off any extra uh, working capital I have. So let's go ahead and calculate my cash flows, my unlevered free cash flows for this fishing charter. So uh, let's start off with the easy one, period zero. I'm going to buy the boat. It's going to cost me $159 today. And now let's go up to my, my revenues. I'm going to run 112 charters, anchor that, times $500 per charter, anchor that. So $56,000 uh, in the first year is the expected amount. Now let's get to my OPEX. My operational expenditures, those that are recorded in the first year, I'm going to take my 112 charters, anchor that, times my $150 per charter, anchor that. I can also copy these over. Well, we can maybe just copy them over at the end. Depreciation. I'm going to depreciate $159,000, anchor that, divide it by 10 years. So my depreciation is $15,990. Both of those are anchored. My insurance costs per year, $1,000. 
my docking fee per season, $1,600, anchored and anchored, which gives me an EBIT of my revenue minus my OPEX, minus my depreciation, minus my insurance, minus my docking fee, 20610 I'll calculate taxes on that 20610 Again, there's, I'm assuming this is, uh, I'm, calculating, I'm calculating free cash flows of the firm, so I'm not worrying about interest expense, uh, assuming it's, say, all equity financed. And so I'll take my EBIT, multiply times my tax rate of 25%, anchor that tax rate, and then take my EBIT after tax. So I'm going to make 15458 in EBIT after tax, or net, that's also called NOPAT, net operating profit after tax. I'm going to copy that across, and I'll just, for simplicity, assume there's no inflation, so I'll just keep prices and costs the same. It wouldn't be that hard to add inflation to it. Now I'm trying to get the free cash flows. So I'm going to take my EBIT after tax. I'm going to add back my depreciation. And uh, let's talk about working capital. So uh, working capital, I'm going, to, I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to assume it's going to be the 10%. There's my 10%. Anchor that times the full year sales at the end of that year. So my working capital is going to go to $5,600, and it's going to stay at that level. And then I'm going to type in a zero right here for a finite life investment. In other words, a business you're going to shut down. An easy assumption is to assume that working capital goes to zero in the in the last year. So my change in net working capital. I'm going to need that $5,600 today. That's going to go from zero to $5,600 minus the change in net working capital. And then I'm going to subtract the change each year. End of year one value minus period zero value. And notice it doesn't change until we get to the final year in which I liquidate it. It goes from $5,600 down to zero, so that number comes back. And I need my last number here before calculating free cash flows of the firm. At the end of the eighth year, I'm going to sell this boat. I'm going to sell it for the salvage value of assumed of $50,000. But I need to get after-tax salvage. So I'm going to take that $50,000 and subtract the taxes on the $50,000. To do that, I need to calculate one other number, the net fixed assets, so or the net book value. I'm going to initially have a boat that's worth $159,900. Each year it's going to be depreciated by subtracting the depreciation. So by the end of the eighth year, according to the IRS, that boat is worth $31,980. i am selling it for $50,000. So I need to pay taxes on the difference between $50,000 and its net book value. So I'm going to take $50,000 minus the tax rate, 25%. All right, times my salvage value, looks like it's in B5, minus the net book. So according to the IRS, I'm going to show a taxable gain of the difference between 50000 and 31.9 and pay 25% tax. So my after-tax salvage is 45.495. So now I can calculate my free cash flows to the firm. I'll just put a formula in here, equals sum, take my after-tax EBIT, add those three items, and there's my free cash flows. Copy that across. And what we have are the free cash flows of the firm. If I, if I fin uh, finance this business with no debt, this would be my after-tax cash flows. These are also called the uh, free cash flows of the firm or unlevered cash flows. Finally, we'll get the total book value. Just to make the accountants happy, I can add these two numbers together. And these will be my total book value of equity. So in this topic, we calculated the unlevered cash flows for a finite life investment. Some things to remember for future problems is I'm going to depreciate the full cost of an item, not the difference between the cost of the item and its expected resale or salvage value. Uh, I need to calculate the after-tax salvage by taking the salvage value minus the tax rate times salvage minus net book. And I want to account for working capital. And for a finite life investment, one that never goes, one that uh, does die. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to shut down this business in eight years. The common assumption is to take the net book value down to zero. I'll also note that uh, for problems, there's usually one of two assumptions on net working capital, and it comes down to when it starts.
sometimes you might say, I'm going to have my networking capital in place by the end of the first year. And sometimes you might say, I need to get the money in that account or, or build up some inventory today. So always look for the assumption. Does the networking capital start today immediately or is it by the end of the first year? The only difference is looking at this number right here, would this $5,600 start today or will it start in one year? And that and the only difference there is this 5,600 would shift over to the second period. I'm sorry, the end of the end of the first year in period one. So in this topic, we calculated the investment after tax unlevered cash flows for this finite life investment.